begins. Um, a special proclamation today for the uh, crew of Driftwood, a 54 54 year tradition in the city of Kenner. If you want to take your seats, please. All right, thank you all for coming. What's that? Everybody's attention. Acting Mayor Joey Lahat uh, has uh, a proclamation he would like to uh, bestow. Please pay attention. Thank you. Is it on? Okay. Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, we might be quite confused today why I'm the acting mayor. Our Mayor Glazer uh, administration contingent is currently representing the city of Kenner in the Washington, D.C. Mardi Gras festivities, which is a, a great weekend up in uh, the nation's capital, which involves many different Louisiana delegations, businessmen, women, um, politicians from around the whole state to really uh, celebrate the Mardi Gras traditions, not just in the New Orleans and Kenner area, but in the nation's capital. I went once, it was a great time, and I'm really glad that we do send uh, you know, the city of Kenner delegation up there to represent our interests and you know, keep communication with all of our uh, DC components, state components, and elsewhere. So Mardi Gras has begun, um, in the tradition of the city of Kenner, one of the main things that happen anywhere in the New Orleans area is the start of the crew of Driftwood, a 54-year tradition that started back in the 1970s, which was formed by Civic Association, which is still run by the Driftwood Park Civic Association, their board and the members on a volunteer basis. Uh, the Driftwood Civic Parade is put on by family members and people who dedicate and donate their time to this cause. And they don't make any money doing so. You know, the, the Civic Association lives off very little uh, membership contributions throughout the year from the neighborhood. Everyone knows I'm a Mardi Gras guy. I live in Driftwood, and I'm still involved in the Civic Association and the parade. And we have today, I think the president, is Christine here today? Is, is Matt coming either? No? Okay. Um, so we have today uh, a tradition in that Every year, a new king and queen is named, and this goes back a long way to the 1970s, and we actually have a party every year where you're part of the club, you come to this great party. We did it last Friday night. Um, but this year, we, the board got together last year um, and decided that there were two very important people in our neighborhood who've lived there a very long time and are very important to the community. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do ladies first. And I'm going to call a very sp special person up here. And then after that, I'm going to bring the family. And then we're going to take pictures, OK? Uh, Miss Carrie Reno, please come to the podium, please. <laughs> you stand here while I embarrass you for the next two minutes. You I know I embarrass you every day. Whereas Carrie Reno was born well, as acting mayor of the city of Kenner in place of Michael Glazer. Whereas Carrie Reno was born and raised in Metro, Louisiana. 22 years ago, she made the move to the Driftwood Park neighborhood in the city of Kenner and has called it home ever since. Where for 18 years, of her 22 years as a proud Driftwood resident, she has been with her loyal partner, Kelly, who has been on her side and her support. Whereas Carrie is a proud mother of three children, Jason, Jamie, and Audrey. And she's a loving and devoted grandmother to two beautiful grandchildren, Eleanor and Jaden. Whereas over the past years, Carrie has been known as a devoted volunteer for the Driftwood Park Civic Association. She is dedicated to helping her community while having fun, spending time with neighbors and her friends. Her favorite times in Driftwood include enjoying crawfish bowls at neighbors, I attend all the time, spending time with friends and family at the annual Driftwood Park Parade, and watching her children grow up and make memories in the neighborhood. Whereas Carrie is known for her love of her community and is so excited to continue to contribute more. Whereas it was great pride that the 54th crew of Driftwood announces its queen, Carrie Reno, may her, jo may her reign be joyous. Now, therefore, I, as Kenner Acting Mayor Joey Lahad, along with the members of Kenner City Council, Chief of Police Keith Conley, do hereby congratulate Ms. Carrie Reno on being named the queen of the 2024 crew of Driftwood in its 54th year. I want to say all hail Queen Carrie.
I'm next going to announce the, uh, the king. I'll have to ask Mr. Jose Perez to please come to the podium, please. Whereas Jose Perez, a native of Cuba, where he lived until the age of 13. In 1968, he courageously left Cuba with his family in search of freedom and a new life. Jose and his family first settled in Spain, where they resided for two years. And in 1970, they arrived in New Orleans. Whereas Jose has been a proud New Orleanian for the past 54 years, soaking up the unique Mardi Gras history and traditions. He is married to Grace, his wife of 41 years. And they are parents to two children, a daughter, Christina, her son, Jose Jr., in addition, they're proud grandparents to two grandsons, PJ, age 12, Rafael, age 22 months. Whereas in 1987, Jose and Grace decided to make the city of Kenner, specifically Driftwood Park, their family home. At the time, their daughter Christina was almost two, and Jose Jr. was on his way. They felt Driftwood was the ideal place to raise a family, so indeed, that is what they did. Whereas Jose volunteered his time as a coach for both baseball and basketball at Gladys Playground. The family were members of Driftwood Park Country Club, where they spent many joyful summers making countless memories. Jose proudly supported Grace in her role as a board member at the club and rode beside her in 2009 when she reigned as queen of the uh, crew of Driftwood Parade. Jose volunteered both his time and labor at the famous Friday night barbecues and pitched in using his handyman skills to help maintain the club's building. A ha handyman at heart, he loves to fix things around his home in his spare time, as well as maintain his beautiful garden. Most importantly, he says he makes sure to spend his time playing golf. I love that one. Whereas as pride, the 54th crew of Driftwood announces as King Jose Perez, may his reign be joyous. Thou therefore, I as acting mayor Joey Lahad, along with the mayor of the Kenner City Council, Chief, Chief Police Keith Conley, to hereby congratulate Mr. Jose Perez on being named the king of the 2024 crew of Driftwood in its 54th year. All hail King Jose. Council members, can we do a picture in front? And oh yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. I won't need much time. No, I wanted to take I, I wanted to take this opportunity to um, thank the city of Kenner, in particular, uh, Mr. Lahat, for bringing the parade back because we lost the parade for one year. We lost the club a few years ago, and that's probably not ever coming back. But we got the parade back, and let me tell you, this parade is not about quantity. It's not even about quality. It's about friends coming out to support the parade, and everybody has a great time. If I was given a choice of being a king of any parade in the city of New Orleans, I would have picked this parade. Thank you very much. So don't want to talk? Are you sure? We talk all the time. Okay, we, we do want a picture though. Council members, if you don't mind, we'll do a quick picture with everybody from the reign of Driftwood.
The council meeting of January 26 will begin in two minutes. I'd like to call the meeting for January 26, 2024 to order. First, I'd start by asking if there's any special intentions. Councilman Swarth. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, I was informed last week that one of retired Kenner firefighters, Rhonda Knowles, passed away. And uh, Rhonda was my firefighter at one time or another. And I wish the family well and all my condolences. Thank you. Councilwoman Dunn. Councilman Brannigan. Oh, yes, in District 4, we had a long, long time resident, Ed Vallette. He passed away this past week. So please pray for his family. And I have a couple as well. Mary Claire Lambert Pettit. She is the daughter of Senator Eddie Lambert and Judge Marilyn Lambert. She is also the wife and mother of two. An expecting mother has cancer and is to undergo, uh, undergo induced labor, surgeries, and chemotherapy. Uh, pray for her that her cancer is either cured by surgery a surgical intervention or is treated and goes into remission, whichever is best for her medical condition, and that she recovers without any additional health complications and lives a long, full life. <coughs> also, Tony Levia, he's a retired JPSO reserve deputy who was my lieutenant in the first district, recently passed away. He, was, he, he will be greatly missed, and he was a tremendous asset to all of us in JPSO. Um, 
please, please, I ask that you pray for his family and friends and, and keep them uh, in your thoughts during these difficult times. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, Councilwoman uh, McKinney, if you can lead us in prayer. Yes. If we can all bow our heads. Lord God, thank you for this day and the opportunity to come together to make impactful decisions for our community and work together for the best of Kenner. On this day, please give us direction, fortitude, and grace to deal with anything that may lay ahead. May we seek your guidance and work steadfastly in your name. Lord, pray for all of the community members that we recently lost. Lord, let us know, let, um, let them know that we are, that they're constantly um, in our prayers and in our thoughts. We're grateful for them, for their contributions, um, and are always um, praying for their families. Amen. Amen. Council Member Swarth, if you can lead us in the pledge. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please cover your hearts. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Councilman Lahat will be serving as acting mayor for this meeting. In accordance with Council Resolution Number B14550, please be advised that all cellular telephones and other devices of this nature must be deactivate, deactivated or silenced throughout the Council meeting. Next, we have correspondence, reports from the Mayor, CAO, and Department Heads. Uh, Acting Mayor Lahat. Yes, at this time, um, obviously, Ms. Councilwoman D. Dunn mentioned this earlier, but uh, former Councilwoman Wilma Irvin passed away. She was a very vital Councilwoman in the history of politics in Kenner, and she served on the Council from July 1st, 1982 through June 11th, 1994. She entered, she had community service dedication to District 1 for decades, and a lot of people don't know is that uh, former Councilwoman Jeannie Black who was really, to me, the best council member to ever occupy my council district three spot, was best friends with Miss Irvin. They were growing up. Uh, Miss Jeannie Black grew up in South Kenner with Councilwoman Irvin, and they were best friends. And I'd like to get some good stories from Miss Black one day about how they, they, you know, they, they, they grew up together and did some things. But I'm going to see my time to Councilwoman Dunn at this point to give a little background of Councilwoman Irvin because she was a vital person in the history of this city. Yeah, I've been, I have known Ms. Irvin uh, ever since she was on the council. Uh, when she ran, I supported her and, uh, and in her time, she was a graduate of the uh, of Kenner Elementary School. So that's how long she's actually been in the district all of her life. Uh, she worked throughout the parish. She was a advocate for children uh, and things of that nature. She also was very instrumental in building our Council on Aging uh, that we have now. So not only did she work with the youth, but she also established many uh, programs for the elderly also. But also in her tenure with a lot of the people in her district uh, know about was in 1972 when she opened up her Little Lamb Nursery. So a lot of the kids that was in the community uh, was able to go to her nursery. Uh, she was very instrumental through Bessie Hammond who approached her and a group of citizens and asked her to run for that seat uh, for the Kenner City Council in this seat. She actually served uh, the citizens of District 1 for 12 years. Uh, not only that, she was uh, an advocate for repairing the streets and all of that. Where we had the MLK uh, march on the other uh, day, the ceremony, she was actually instrumental in that in tearing down the old 
uh, Green Lizard Apartments, that's what it was actually called. So they tore that down, and then they ended up uh, later on, but she was instrumental in introducing the legislation for uh, the MLK building and a lot of these other parks that we see. It may not have been completed during her tenure, but it was under uh, her administration that these buildings and things were put in place. And also, last but not least, she fought very hard, and Kenner was the first um, place uh, in this region that actually had the MLK a march and ceremony. She actually went uh, with, at that time, uh, Mayor Broussard, because she served up under him also uh, in order to, you know, ensure that Kenner had an MLK march and ceremony. And as you all can remember, last year, we did uh, honor her as a trailblazer for all of the work that she had done. And, you know, a lot of this stuff had come out. So. Prayerfully, uh, as we move forward, we would also do something. I would like to see something in her honor because as the councilwoman, she did a lot for this district. And she was the first to, you know, actually move forward. So we, we really want to do something for her. Now, let me just say one other thing. Her funeral is set for Friday coming, a week from today. Uh, that's on September the 2nd, and it will be at the Little Zion Baptist Church. So we will be looking uh, for the uh, mayor or whatever, the council, to actually be there. So that will be September, February, the, February I'm sorry, <laughs> February the 2nd. Uh, and that would be at the Little Zion Baptist Church right over here on Kenner Avenue. That's in the morning, Ms. D. That would be, I'm, I haven't gotten the exact time, but I'm assuming around 10 o'clock. Okay. It should be around 10 o'clock. Preferably, we will also give her a proclamation or something for her service. No. Because 12 years is a long time to actually serve people of our district, and we'll talk more about her accomplishments. I would love to do that. I would definitely be in favor for doing something special for her and her memory. So. Um, Whatever you want to do, I'll, I'll be fine. We'll vote for that in favor. Thank you all so much. Yes. Thank you, Councilwoman D. Um, being acting mayor, I don't really have any other reports. Uh, obviously, my district, you know, the the pickleball thing on Friday nights we're doing is, is, is going very well. People are showing up. We had 50 people last Friday. That's a really great thing, a change in the recreation department in Charles Alon. Uh, doing a really good job and we have a lot of people coming out and participating in that we're going to try to expand it might something we want to do throughout the city because of how popular it is um, but other than that just being the the active mayor at this point I don't want to say so many other things um, but we did the driftwood uh, parade will be starting tomorrow at 1 p.m. a lot of y'all gonna ride in it so I look forward to seeing you and having a great time with the family and friends thank you mr. acting mayor uh, madam clerk yes sir under resolutions, motions, and other items from the floor, I have a motion by Councilmember Brennan, seconded by Councilmember McKenney, to add item 3E. Application number 2384-24, John James Audubon Elementary, to hold a public gathering on February 8, 2024, from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. for the purpose of a school parade at 200 Loyola Drive in Kenner, Louisiana. All council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 70 to amend the six zero to amend the agenda. Under the consent agenda, I have item one, approval of minutes, the regular council meeting of January 11, 2024. Motion by Council Member McKinney and seconded by Council Member Wilmot. Uh, council members, please vote. Um, let me read in those permits real quick before sure. we vote, sir. Sure. Item two is approval of alcoholic beverage permit applications. We have none. Item three is approval of bingo and public gathering applications. Item 3A is application number 2378-24, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Louisiana Foundation to hold a public gathering on February 17, 2024 from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. for the purpose of job fair at Lincoln Manor Gym, 3100 Tifton Street. 
Item 3B is application number 2379-24, Carrie Reno to hold a public gathering on January 27, 2024 from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. for the purpose of a crew of Driftwood Parade after party at 51 Monterey Drive. Item 3C is application number 2380-24, visit Kenner to hold a public gathering on February 10, 2024 from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. for the purpose of a Kenner Gras at Kenner City Park at 3800 Loyola. Item 3D is application 2381-24, the City of Kenner hold a public gathering on February 25th, 2024 from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. for the purpose of a Kenner Black History Festival at Rivertown Parking Lot, 400 Williams Boulevard. Item 3E is application number 2384-24, John James L. Audubon Elementary to hold a public <coughs> gathering on February 8, 2024 from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. for the purpose of a school parade at 200 Loyola Drive. And that will conclude the consent agenda. Thank you, Madam, <laughs> for reading those in. Uh, motion by Council Member McKinney and seconded by Council Member Wilmot. Please, Council Members, vote. Council Members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6 0. Under the public appearance agenda, we have item 8, public hearings and final passage. Item 8A is a public hearing regarding resolution number B17367, a resolution calling a public hearing to determine whether the structures located at 3015 Akron Street in Kenner, Louisiana shall be abated by repair, rehabilitation, demolition, or removal. Motion by Council Member Dunn, seconded by Council Member Brennan to open public hearing. Mm -hmm. Please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6-0. We're now in a public hearing. Um, I believe we have the Code Enforcement Department to make a presentation. If you will. Good morning, Council and Administration. Catherine Topple, Director of Inspection and Code Enforcement. Offices at 1926 18th Street, City of Kenner. The structure we have today is a one-story, single-family, elevated structure on pilasters uh, with the address of 3015 Acorn Street. This property is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Johnny Wells. On June 7th of last year, 2023, it was determined that this property uh, is unsafe and dangerous to the health and public safety of the general citizens. It, it also does not meet any building codes as well as Section 557 of the Code of Ordinances of Kenner. On September 25th, our office sent a notice by certified mail to the property owner advising of the property violations. On November 13, 2023, we appointed a curator to represent the owner and to locate any persons of interest for the property. Uh, Mr. Wells and uh, Mr. Fenton Wells and Ms. Sonia Wells are the only surviving owners. Uh, Ms. Sonia Wells did reach out to the curator who is present today uh, and provided her address in Colorado. I don't believe they've heard from Mr. Fenton Wells. It's noted in the report from our engineer, Digital Engineering, who was retained by the city, that the following reasons are uh, of inadequate maintenance, dilapidation, and abandonment. The permanent utilities are all been disconnected. Um, Atmos was disconnected in 2005, September 2005. Entergy has been disconnected since November of 2010. And Jefferson Parish Water confirmed the water meter has been removed. None of the windows or doors have been boarded up. In this particular structure has been undergoing renovations at some point in 2018. Uh, code enforcement's last inspection on the property was January 29, 2018, as far as for uh, repair of the structure. There are small remnants of the water barrier remain on the exterior of the building. However, most of it has been uh, blown off over the years. The OSB plywood sheathing is severely weathered and warped. And this method, this material is not suitable for exterior exposure to the elements. The interior of the structure is totally gutted. Portions of the front porch railing are missing and other sections are loose. The northernmost wood column supporting the porch roof is dislodged and can easily be dislocated. And based on this report from the engineer, the structure is seriously a public hazard, and, and we recommend the city take the necessary steps to have it demolished. Uh, we did reach out to our contractor for demolition, and the estimated cost of demolition is $23,760.
And as was mentioned, um, the curator is also here present on behalf of the owners. And that concludes my presentation. Does any council members have any questions? Uh, council member Swarth. Ms. Catherine, how many square foot is this house about? I just looking at it, maybe 960 at the most. It's very, it's, it's rather small structure. That's probably a, under a thousand for sure. Yes. And how much you said was demolition is going to be? The estimated uh, cost for demolition is 23,760. 23,000. That's a lot. We have a current contract with a demolition contractor that we must. And it's still pipe works that we still doing with. I'm sorry. Pipe works. Yes, sir. That's a lot for that house, but yes. we've, we're bound. So we are bound okay. by the contract, correct? Anyone else? Yeah. Councilwoman Dunn. Why, again, why were not the residents present today? They were notified and sent certified mail and actually did reach out to their curator who was representing them. However, they did not respond to our department. Um, so that's why we appointed a curator to make, represent their interest in this structure. Okay. I, I agree with uh, Mrs. Showar. That's a lot of money to demolish the building of that size. Okay. Again, we, are, we do have a contract in place we can't go out around that contract. And we are concerned about the public health and safety. As you can see from the pictures on the PowerPoint, the structure is wide open. And uh, anybody can get into that structure at this time. Oh, I agree. It's got to come down. I'm just saying that the price is ridiculous. That's all. Anyone else? Seeing none. Thank, thank you, Ms. Top. Thank you. And if we can, have the curator come up. State your name, name for the record, please. Good morning. My name is James Raff. I was appointed curator um, from the law firm LeBlanc Fantasy Bilio to locate and represent the absent property owners at 3015 Acron Street. Upon being appointed, I um, used internet resources, resources excuse me, to find the potential property owners. Those included JeffNet, Jefferson Parish Assessor's Office, Orleans Parish Assessor's Office, White Pages, and Google Search. I was able to find addresses for all of the property owners, and I sent certified letters to each. Additionally, I placed a legal advertisement in the Times-Picayune and New Orleans Advocate. That advertisement ran on November 20th, 21st, and 22nd, 2023. One of the property owners, Sonia Wells, reached out to me she informed me that all of the other property owners, with the exception of her and Felton Wells, were deceased. She told me that she didn't have any plans for the property. Um, she didn't know what was going on with it, frankly. Um, I advised her to contact code enforcement um, to try to get the issues um, with this property straightened up. Um, she provided me a contact address in Colorado and a phone number. And when I got notice of this hearing, I additionally attempted to call her on the phone number she left me. I couldn't get through to her. And then I also sent a letter to her, um, I think on January 16th, advising her of the hearing. Okay, uh, did, you, did you, as far as notices, so you, you went the, the typical uh, extremes to, to, to send out notice, correct? Yes, sir. And are they here today? Do you, know, do you know if they're here? I don't believe they're here. Is anybody here on behalf of the property owners? Individually? No? Okay. All right. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you. Anybody else make any comment at the, the public section of this hearing? None? Okay. Anybody? Councilman Brannigan? Councilman Brannigan? Ms. Topper. So we, we tear this thing down, okay? If we decide to tear it down, then we put a lien on the property so the city's not out the $23,000, correct? That's correct. Okay. And it becomes payable on the tax bill. Okay. And it seems like no one is responding, no property owner is responding, other than talking to the representative one time. That's correct. That, okay. that, that, that's our, that is absolutely correct. 
So basically, if we end up tearing it down, we're going to get our money back if the property is sold. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, Anybody else like to make yes, comments? Yes. Councilwoman um, Dunn. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Topple, have the taxes been paid on this property at all? No. No they taxes have been paid. No. Okay. Any other? No, I just don't. Um, Councilwoman McKinney. Yes. Thank you, Council President. Um, I, I know you said no taxes have been paid. When, do you know when the last, like, yeah. have taxes never been paid or? I don't have that particular information. Okay. I can answer. Okay. Um, so the taxes haven't been paid. They, it went to tax sale in 2002. Um, so it hasn't been paid since then. It's, al it's already adjudicated to the city. So basically it went to tax sale. No one bid. So the city so now has a lien on it okay. already. So it's like 80 nine hundred dollars worth of taxes that includes your tax sale costs though so the lien for the demo would be added to that and then if the property is ever sold or if the city would ever try to take possession or go through the method you know the methods of that then um, we could recover okay thank you so go ahead. so we're going to be in for like 30 grand right we now. will yeah okay so we have the property the property's ours now. it's not ours it's adjudicated so we don't own the property but we have the lien so we hold the lien and then there's a process that legal can get into but there is a process of moving forward to take possession of a property that's been adjudicated how, how long does it take to take possession of the property it would take a good while it's unless we have a purpose for the property yeah. probably the best thing to do is is let it sit and I believe we just had something like this happen not too long ago and I understand that property just sold so we're going to collect on it so at some point in time somebody will probably want this property and want to buy it and when they buy it they have to pay us back what we have lien on so we'll be able to get our property back. so but at this point the property owner cannot sell the property no oh, we get they could try to sell it they could try to sell it, but it's got liens on it so Un yes. I understand yes. so if the property owner tried to settle they would have to settle the tax debt and the lien for the demolition Pays in order to be top. able to sell the property and that's how we would get our money yes, back. yes. okay um, when you s time we don't know a time frame I mean if, if the property is already basically in our possession but not in our possession mm -hmm. you know it, it's a situation where when would the city be able to sell this people? It's piece just of that if we don't have, if there's no public purpose, we can't take possession of it. So <laughs> we'd, have to, we'd have to have a reason yeah. to take the property. There would be, it appears to be in a neighborhood. I don't yeah. know why we okay. would take that property. Uh, we would just do what we had another property, I believe, a couple months ago that we tore down and had a pretty heavy lien. Um, and my understanding is that just sold, um, and then we're going to get our money back for the demolition on that. So it it can happen. It just may take a couple years. Or, Depends on okay. when somebody wants it. I mean, people are buying properties. This has a $30,000 lien on it. Depends on what the value of the actual land is mm -hmm. that somebody would want it. But. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Motion by Council, Council Member Dunn, seconded by Council <coughs> Member uh, Brennan to close public hearing. Council Members, please vote. Aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6 0. A motion by Councilwoman Dunn, seconded by Councilmember Brennan to approve. Any questions at this part? At this point? Seeing none. Council Clerk will need a clarification on what are we approving? Are we approving demolition, repair, whatever? I need to clarify for the minutes, please. <coughs> We approving demolition within the time allowed by law. Is Ms. Topple? Yes. You heard the council clerk's question. We're approving demolition in the time allowed by law. Thank you so much. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6-0. Item nine is ordinances for the sale, purchase, transfer, lease, and or alienation of a movable property. We have none. 
Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is reclassification of zoning for final passage. We have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. Item 12A is summary ordinance number 13,441, an ordinance amending chapter 13 of the Code of Ordinances to add Article 8 to be titled Parks and Playgrounds and establish time frames for parks and playgrounds to be closed to the public in the city of Kenner. I have motion by Council Member uh, Brannigan and seconded by Council Member Swarth. Any questions? Seeing no one. Members, please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6 0. Item 12B is summary ordinance number 13,443, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a grant from the United States Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services, award number 15JCOPS 23GG 04938 UHPX in the amount of $2,500,000 with the City of Kenner match amount of $1,784,080 for the hiring of new police officers for the Kenner Police Department. Motion by Council Member Brennan, seconded by Council, uh, Council Member McKinney. Um, in the discussion part, I ask that uh, Deputy Chief DeForges give an explanation. Good morning. I'm David DeForge, Deputy Chief, Kenner Police Department. Um, so this grant, the, the biggest thing about this grant is a reimbursement grant. It's not money up front. We have to spend the money first, and then we are reimbursed. We have to fill out quarterly reports, and then we are reimbursed. So we're not getting $2.5 million to spend. We have to spend it first and then be reimbursed. So what I, uh, I did today is I asked Lieutenant Hales to come and speak on this. Uh, he and Sal Laharza have been working on this grant for months. So I'm going to ask uh, Lieutenant Hales to step up and give you a little bit more explanation on the grant. Lieutenant, if you will. Uh, good morning, Lieutenant Ethan Hales with the Karen Police Department. I am the emergency manager for the police department. I oversee all the grants for the department as well. Uh, in 23, we applied for this grant. Uh, we got accepted. About 654 applications were received by the Department of Justice. We were one of 390 that got it. Uh, again, as Deputy Chief said, it is up to uh, two and a half million. We do not have to spend the entire amount of the two and a half. Uh, it is up to 20 new police officer positions. So if we do not fill all those positions and we do not have, there's no obligation to spend the, the 2.5 and then the match of uh, approximately 1.7. It's four new police officer positions uh, that we would fill and it covers three years of salary. Well, the 58 point 36% of the salary comes from the federal government through reimbursement, and then the city's obligated to pay the remaining, you know, 41.64%. It's a reimbursement grant every quarter. Uh, we would submit to the government like we do with all the other grants that we have through the Department of Justice. Uh, and that, that's really our requirement is to report and uh, pay the officer and maintain their salary. That's what we have to do. And how many positions you said? Up to 20. Up to 20. Any questions from council? Councilwoman McKinney? Um, yes, thank you, Council President. Um, my only question is to clarify. So um, this is already using, um, the Kenner match is already using funds that are allocated and in the budget, right? So it's not a new funding. It's just we're actually um, getting funds that we could use in other places for that. Right, we would have right. to take money from our budget and right. pay the officer up front. Right. And then quarterly, we would get reimbursed for the federal percentage of it. Okay, perfect. And you're, it could be up to 20, but what are the plans? I don't know, maybe you mentioned it already. Like, you don't 20 know. 20 is a dream. Yeah, <laughs> we, we would love to have 20. Uh, and it's a five year performance period. So okay. nothing says we can't apply for this grant again next year. Okay, so you, you don't, but you're not planning on doing all 20, if, depending on how many you can actually hire. That's dependent yeah, on that. Yeah, that, right? okay. it's, it's quite a turnaround to get 20 new police officers. It would, definitely be another grant reporting period where we would we would ask for more money but it would be a separate grant application great this one is only up to 20. thank you any other councilman councilman brannigan um so we can go up to 20. uh how many positions do we have funded in the budget that are not filled for police offices i believe that's a chief question that that would be a, a an answer the chief would have to get back with you on okay all right so I'm just trying to figure out how the layout is 
you know, with getting the 58% back, um, if it's already funded in the budget, then it's, doesn't have a, it, it has a positive impact on the budget. So as everybody knows, I'm sure, the Chief's been an advocate of recruiting. Um, and since we don't have a dedicated funding, this, this would help us out tremendously also. Uh, he is huge on recruiting. He's done a wonderful job so far. I think we're up around 23 to 25 officers since he took office just, what, 18 months ago. Uh, we just did some interviews the other day. We have more interviews coming. Uh, he is continually pushing for recruitment. So this, this would help us out tremendously. I, I, I think it's a no-brainer. So Absolutely. I think it's a great deal. Absolutely. Well Any, done. Anybody else have any questions or comment? None? Nobody in the public, no? Okay. Well, thank you very much. It looks like it's a win-win a for Kenner. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. With that being said, uh, motion by Council Member Brennan and seconded by Council, Council Member McKinney. Members, please vote. This. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Motion passes 6-0. Item 13 is re resolutions and motions by council members. A resolution temporarily suspending council rule number 11 of the rules of organization, business, order, and procedure of the council of the city of Kenner and rescheduling the Kenner City Council agenda deadline to Friday, February 16, 2024 at noon for the council meeting of February 23rd, 2024. Motion by Council Member Wilmot, seconded by Council Member Swarth. Any comments, questions? Seeing none. Motion by Council Member Wilmot, seconded by Council Member Swarth. Council members, please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion <coughs> passes 6 0. Item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. I have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A is summary ordinance number 13,442. An ordinance approving an agreement with Beacon Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration Incorporated to provide air conditioning, heating and refrigeration services labor only in accordance with RFP 23-6786 and an amount not to exceed $250,000 annually for the Department of General Services. <coughs> Motion by Council Member McKinney, seconded by Council Member Dunn. Any comments, questions? Is somebody here on behalf of uh, the Department of General Services? Is that Mr. Glorioso? Normally, we ask uh, for particular uh, facilities. In this case, it's a general uh, amount for general services. Is that correct? It's citywide for, for all city facilities. Okay. So the 250 could be for several buildings, not just. Yeah, multiple locations. Okay. All right. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from anyone? No. Motion by Council Member McKinney, seconded by Council Member Dunn. Council members, please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6 0. Item 15B is summary ordinance number 13,444. An ordinance approving a professional services agreement with Ames Group Incorporated regarding the resurfacing of Veterans Boulevard, Williams Boulevard to Roosevelt Boulevard, state project number H period 015562, federal aid project number H015562, and an amount not to exceed $185,627.82 for the Department of Public Works. Motion by Council Member Swarth, seconded by Council Member McKinney. Um, if you will, Mr. Gonzalez, give us an explanation. Some time ago, the city applied for federal funding to resurface veterans between Williams and Roosevelt. And the city succeeded in receiving the federal money for construction-related work. As a result of that, then the city had to enter into an agreement with the state DOTD to be able to receive those funds. 
that state city agreement has already been executed. Okay. Therefore, there was a need to select a consultant for design related services, and this is what this ordinance does. Mm -hmm. Selects a consultant and approve fees for design related services. And this is an 80-20? This is an 80-20 for all construction related work. Very good. This is all good stuff. This is good to see. Good. Yeah, we're, we're glad to see it happen. So we can have some a big project happening on Veterans Highway in the near future. Correct. Well, you know the fact that we're going to get you know Veterans resurface and we're going to get an extra lane, you know, for westbound Vest to northbound Williams as a result of the ongoing work is all good. Very good. Anybody have any questions? I, I do, sir. Yes, Mr. Swore. So this um, 185, that's just consultant fees? That's it's, consulting fees. It's just consulting fees. It's consulting fees, which is design-related fees, as well as supplemental related fees, which is surveying and geotechnical. OK, and that has absolutely nothing to do with the resurfacing itself. No, the resurfacing work is roughly $1.9 million, of which the federal government is going to pick up 80%. 80%. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, question to go to complement that uh, so the resurfacing itself when is the actual um, labor going to be done being that we're dealing with federal money and and we have to work with the state DOTD in the preparation of plans review of plans <coughs> approval of plans you know uh, I'm looking at maybe two to three years so as far as this is concerned, this is one piece of legislation coming through us. We may have another one for the actual construction at a later date, or is this is? Correct. Okay. Being that federal funds are going to be used to finance the resurfacing of this project, and we have a city-state DOTD agreement, uh, the state DOTD bids the project. We have to concur on their decision to award to a law bidder. But that's going to take place roughly two years. And that's that's an 80-20 split as well? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. All construction-related work, construction and inspection services and testing services, is all going to be 80-20. Okay, real good. So we got something else that we're looking forward to as far as legislation in the future. Uh, yeah, roughly once once DOTD bids the project and asks us to concur on the law bid, that's when we'll act on it. Very good. Thank thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Yes, Councilman. This, this project's already started because the turning lane is being put in. That's, that's no, the, the work that's going on out there is the ongoing work on Williams, which was part of Kenner's 2030 plan that calls for <coughs> Williams Boulevard improvements in conjunction with adding a lane on veterans okay. westbound to northbound. That's going to give us two turning lanes for westbound veterans to northbound Williams. Okay. And that's a big improvement as well. So, anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I do. Councilwoman I do Dunn. For her say. So you are saying that where they're putting, um, where where this thing is already dug up, and and they're putting that back. Who's doing that? That's the current contractor right now, which is uh, Barry A Construction Company, under the Williams Boulevard project. If you are referring to the area that is being dug up on vets or any work along Williams yes. between I-10 and, and West Metairie, that's all part of a project that started years ago on the Kenner's 2030 plan. It's two different things on veterans. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Seeing none. Motion by Councilwoman Swarth, seconded by Councilmember McKinney. Council members, please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6-0. Mr. Chairman, if I could make a point of clarification. At the request of Councilman Member Brennan, um, he has requested that item 12B, which is the grant from for the police department, he has um, suggested that the council members' names go on the bottom as sponsored by, along with the mayor's name. I just need a yes that everybody's okay with putting their names on the legislation prior to me doing it. Everybody's good? Everybody's, everybody's good? Yes. 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 Good. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
Item 15C is summary ordinance number 13,445, an ordinance approving an agreement with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development State Project Number H, period 015796, Federal Aid Project Number H015796, regarding Veterans Boulevard, shared use path from Richland Street to Williams Boulevard. Motion by Council Member Dunn, seconded by Council Member McKinney. Discussion? Mr. Gonzalez, if you will, give us an explanation. Uh, once again, the city was successful in applying for federal funding for this project that calls for a multi-use pass, which is a combination of pedestrian and bicycle pass to be constructed between Richland Street, which is west of Loyola, all the way to Williams Boulevard. The city applied for federal funding. The city was awarded federal money for this one. This one is not 80-20. This one is even better. It's 85-15. And as a result of this, there's a need, being that we are going to get federal funding, there is a need for a city-state DOTD agreement. And that's what this ordinance does, allows us to proceed with the execution of a city state DOTD agreement before the city can select a consultant for design related services. Okay, so this isn't for the actual construction at this point? Not yet. Okay, down the road. Okay. Down the road, just like the other. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Seeing none, count the motion by Council Member Swarth, seconded by Council Member McKinney. Council members, please vote. Uh, point of I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. Motion by Council Member Dunn, seconded by Council Member McKinney. Council members, please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6 0. Item 15D is summary ordinance number 13,446. An ordinance approving a professional service agreement with MSMM Engineering LLC regarding the resurfacing of Vintage Drive eastbound Duncan Canal to Power Boulevard, state project number H period 015561, federal aid project number H015561, and an amount not to exceed $162,855.50 for the Department of Public Works. Motion by Council Member Brannigan, seconded by Council Member McKinney. Comments, questions? Mr. Uh, Gonzalez, if you will, again, uh, one more time. I know you've been busy uh, and you're doing some fabulous work for the city. Uh, if you will, just clarification on this one. Once again, the city applied for federal funding for every surfacing of vintage between the Duncan Canal and Powell Boulevard. And we have succeeded in receiving those federal funds. And the city has selected a consultant for design-related services. And all this ordinance is doing is accepting an agreement with the consultant and the fees involved. And we did apply for federal funding, not just for the eastbound, but also for the westbound. But limited federal funding only allows us to receive federal funding for the eastbound. That's not to say that we're not going to try again, because we will try it again to get money for westbound vintage between the Duncan Canal and Power. So we'll see what happens. Very good. Any other comments, questions? Seeing none, uh, motion by Council Member Brannigan, seconded by Council Member McKinney. Council members, please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 7-0. Item 15E is summary ordinance number 13,447. An ordinance approve an amendment number four to the engineering agreement with Digital Engineering and Imaging Incorporated dated March 19, 2018 regarding Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality Clean Water State Revolving Fund loan administration slash management to increase the not to exceed amount of 150, by $150,000 for a new not to exceed amount of $860,000 for the Department of Wastewater. Motion by Council Member Brannigan, seconded by Council Member Brennan. Comments, questions? Mr. Murillo. Al Murillo, 4260 East Loyola Drive. 
5th District, 52 years. I see Joanne coming up here now. That's why I beat her up here, because I didn't see her moving over there. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to get an explanation on what is the reason for this cap increase. And I, I take it this fund is taxpayer dollars. So if you can give an explanation, I appreciate it, young lady. <laughs> So this $150,000 increase to Digital's existing contract is for the LDEQ loan projects, that two of the projects we, um, y'all passed last week, the 25th in Salem and the 25th in Helena lift stations, the relocation and all new equipment and also for the St. Jude lift station for the construction for that and the design engineering to oversee the, the, the all those projects. So they oversee the, the design engineers, the contractors, they oversee all of the working parts on all of these projects. And this and is for the a city's loan. Behalf. For this the is a loan. loan seven. Any comments, questions from anyone? Mr. Morello, you good? I'm good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Motion by Councilmember Brannigan, seconded by Councilmember Brennan. Council members, please vote. Council members in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Seeing none, motion passes 6-0. Item 16 is ordinances and resolutions in summary for first reading. Item 16A is an ordinance amending ordinance number 11,964, adopted February 18, 2022, to clarify which sales are subject to the sales tax of 2% in the North 1300 Block Veterans Boulevard Economic Development District, State of Louisiana. Item 16B is an ordinance approving amendment number five to the agreement with Linfield, Hunter and Junius Incorporated for professional services relating to the Rivertown slash South Kenner drainage improvements, increasing the agreement amount by $35,000 for a total not to exceed amount of $596,950 for the Department of Federal Program Compliance. Item 16C is an ordinance approving a cooperative endeavor agreement with Education Specialist LLC doing business as Camp Town USA for use of Gladys Gymnasium in exchange for summer recreational programming for the Parks and Recreation Department. Item 16D is an ordinance accepting the lowest responsive base bid received from BLD Services LLC for the 43rd and California Partial Sewer Force Main Replacement in accordance with seal bid number 23-6801 in the amount of $1,000,000 $7,900 for the Department of Wastewater. Item 16E is an ordinance ratifying the emergency replacement of pump number two rotating assembly at Arizona and 37th Street lift station by Fluid Processing Pumps LLC in the amount of $6,047 for the Department of Wastewater. Item 16F is an ordinance ratifying the emergency replacement of pump number one rotating assembly at Brittany Place lift station by Fluid Processing Pumps LLC in the amount of $6,047 for the Department of Wastewater. Item 16G is an ordinance approving amendment number two to the agreement with BLD Services LLC dated October 20th, 2022 for preventive maintenance of existing sanitary and storm sewers to increase the not to exceed amount by $300,000 annually for a new not to exceed amount of $1,050,000 for the Department of Wastewater. Item 16H is an ordinance approving amendment number two to the agreement with Bow Brothers Construction Company LLC to provide asphalt street maintenance on an as needed basis increasing the agreement amount by $1 million annually for a new not to exceed amount of $3 million annually for the Department of Field <laughs> Services. Item 16I is an ordinance accepting the lowest response bid received from J. Calderera and Company Incorporated for the South Kenner Drainage Improvements Project in the amount of $2,777,700 for the Department of Federal Program Compliance. Item 17 is reports from the Council and our special committees. Council Member Brannigan. Uh, at the beginning of the meeting when we were asking for special intentions, um, I, I just got another one. Uh, our assistant director in recreation, Terrence, uh, had a health issue, and I would hope that everyone would pray for her, his reco speedy recovery uh, because he is an excellent employee and has done a lot for the recreation department in the short time that he's been here. Thank you. Any other reports? <coughs> Seeing none. Council, council uh, clerk. Item 18 is new business. We have none. 
Item 19 is unfinished business on the motion and or motions to reconsider or remove from a tabled position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. Mr. Almarilla. Almarilla, 4260 East Royal Drive, 5th District, 52 years. I want to uh, pose this question to uh, Acting Mayor Joy the Hat. At the last council meeting, uh, I requested that a representative from Waste Pro be here. Now, I know we're not voting on it uh, today, but I did make that request. Uh, were you able to uh, get in touch with anybody over there to invite them here? But you finish your questions, Mr. Al? Yes, I got That's your main question? I won't. No, no, I don't have any more questions for him, just that one. Okay. But uh, I'm not going to yield my time. He can answer when I'm done. You can okay, okay, you're done? No, I'm not done. Okay, we'll continue. Okay. Now, uh, speaking about Waste Pro, one of the questions I would have for this representative, what are we going to be getting for 35% more uh, what we're paying now than what we get now? And one other thing, okay, like Mr. Brown at the last meeting, I'm, I'm not going to be, I may not be impacted too much by this, but this is not, a, 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 like him, it's not about me. This is about the citizens of Canada who's going to be deeply impacted, who are struggling to put food on the table and keep a roof over their head. That's why I'm at this podium. It's got nothing to do with me. So I think that when this representative does come down here before we take this vote, we need to ask him some serious questions extensively before we decide to vote on this thing. We already got another uh, uh, contract in here now. And I've been saying uh, for the last few meetings, the logistics of this city does not support two solid waste contractors in this city. The 52 years I've been living here, we've only ever had one. Now all of a sudden we got two. So anybody got any comments, any questions? Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank Al, you. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Council. Yes. Please. Um, I did say at the last meeting I'm going to request the waste pro representative to come, and I meant at the time when we're going to vote and talk. And I, it, it, I'm telling you again that the meeting we vote on the waste pro contract, it's going to be an extensive meeting. It'll be a lot of questions back. I have a lot of questions. I think I'll ask that'll probably things that you want to ask too. I have requested that they will be here at that meeting, which will be the next one, because they had to lay over. So if I gave you the impression I was asking him to come today, I apologize. That's not what I meant last meeting. I meant when he can't, when he's coming for us to vote on the actual new contract. So I am requesting the administration that he does come before we vote. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong, uh, Acting Mayor of the Hat. Uh, that's why I asked you this question today. This is the first time I've ever been an acting mayor, so I hope I'm, hope I'm doing okay. <laughs> well, I got to call you what you are today. I can't call you constantly. You're acting Thank, mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Al. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Mr. Taff? Uh, Greg Taff, 5th District. Um, I've got a couple questions that I'd like to get answers to t today. Uh, there's been some talk on the streets and on, on social media that is very concerning, and I'd like to clarify some of it to make sure that what's being said is either true or false or indifferent. And this pertains to the fire department. One of the questions I have is, number one, since this millage got approved, has the fire department personnel received an increase or, or and if they have when did when did it go into effect the second thing i have is the previous administration and, and in talking to the fire chief there was a system supposedly in place where daily the departments or the locations would call in any maintenance issues or any problems that they're having, such as, you know, water, roofing, and et cetera, and equipment. I want to know if that's still in place and if that's still being adhered to, or did that go by the wayside? The next thing I have a question regarding is that I understand, I've heard, I, I, and again, I just need answers because I don't know the answers. 
But I've heard that we had four of six fire trucks down due to batteries. Now, and that, that's why I asked the, first, the other question as far as maintenance, because I don't understand how that could happen. And especially with a truck that, that if we would have had a fire, if you got six and four are down, that could create a big problem. So I need to know, did that really happen? Did we have trucks disabled? And the other thing is, and I hope it isn't true, that we have fire trucks that don't have working door handles. Now, it don't sound like a big deal, but you got to be able to get into the truck. And, you know, as I understand what the fire department does is that they try to expediently get the truck on the road to go to the location to fight the fire. Well, you can't do that if you can't get into it like you're supposed to. So I just need to have these questions answered because, again, I don't know if they're true. I don't know if they're false. But it's on the street, it's be, and there's people talking about it, and I think it needs to be clarified. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tell. Chief Morris. Mr. Taft, I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't taking notes. And I'll try to answer all your questions. If I miss one, please address it. Uh, as far as the salaries, all oh, know the salary structure hadn't been implemented yet. Um, for the pay increase, the military just passed, the uh, vote hadn't been certified as of yet. So we're still uh, waiting on those things to happen, a few other things to happen before we increase the salaries of the firefighters. Your next question was on the repairs of the truck. We do have a maintenance uh, process in place. The assistant chiefs, uh, the members in the station report this through our record management system to what uh, issues need to be addressed with the individual fire trucks and we prioritize those. And I want you to remember years ago, I've been saying that we have a very old fleet. We spend almost $200,000 a year just trying to keep the fleet up and running. So we have to prioritize some of those things. Some, you know, safety issues are a priority. They always take uh, precedence over anything else. And the mechanical issues or, I mean, the convenience issues are given a lower priority. But I don't know about uh, the door issue that apparently has been posted. I'm not on Facebook to see these things, but uh, my assistant chief on duty can speak to that as to how that reporting process happened, and even if that is, in fact, true, because we had something early in the week that I received a call from one of the councilmen about our fire truck with 158,000 miles on it and all the warning lights lit on the dashboard. It wasn't our fire truck from, what, from the research that we did, so we need to do some research on your question also to find out what the actual facts are about that now. Um, what's your other question? Maintenance, maintenance of the stations? Yeah, that's, still, that's all part of the same record management process where the members of the station go in and report any issues that they have, and it goes to the assistant chief, and then it moves to the necessary members uh, to address those issues. So you have a system in place? Yes, sir. Is that good, Mr. Tao? Thank you. Thank you, chief. All right. Any other comments, questions by council members? Or public. Okay. Madam Clerk. Motion to adjourn. That's it. Adjourn. Motion move. Adjourn. We adjourn. <laughs>